Hare Krishna. Thank you for your association. Thank you for your time. Thank you for listening to me. Bhagavad Gita is not a Hindu religious book. Well, Hindus believe in it. There is something which even an atheist, a Hindu, Muslim, Christian can learn from it. I can be Hindu today, tomorrow Christian, day after tomorrow atheist, after that Buddhist, after that Muslim. My relationship with you, earth, air, water, fire, does not change. All the religious designations are temporary. So, sometimes I talk to people who have very serious uh, health situations. Uh, maybe they have to undergo chemotherapy or maybe they have to undergo some very uh, devastating surgery. Maybe they, have to under- maybe they have just underwent heart surgery or maybe, you know, uh, they uh, have to go some surgery or something or some invasive medical procedure. So how does one prepare for this uh, invasive medical procedure? Bhagavad Gita, 5th chapter, 29th sloka, uh, gives us some clues on it. Bhoktaram yajna tapasam sarvaloka maheshwaram suhrudam sarvadehinam suhrudam sarvabhutanam gnatva mam shanti mruchati a person fully conscious of Krishna, knowing Krishna to be the ultimate beneficiary of all sacrifices and austerities, the supreme lord of all planets and demigods, and the benefactor and well-wisher of all living entities, attains peace from the pangs of material visits. So, surgery or some serious medical condition is a pang of material misery, and we need to attain peace, peace from it. And we do that by being God conscious. Uh, let's say, uh, you know, you have to have a surgery and let's say you have a two week of lead time on it. What you should do is, number one, switch off the TV, switch off internet browsing, CNN.com and all these things and let your mind focus on the healing. The mind is either the best friend or the worst enemy. This is from Bhagavad Gita, 6th chapter, 6th sloka and maybe 6th chapter, Today in our modern medical system, we distract the mind with so many things. Uh, number one, before we get into hospital, we distract our mind with so many mind-numbing substances such as alcohol, drugs and whatnot. And when you are in the hospital, we distract the mind so much with television and this and that, that the mind is not given the chance to heal the body very well. Actually, all diseases start at the mind level and then they descend on to the body level. In our modern medicine, we are giving medicines, but we are not trying to understand diseases at a mind level. And so try to fix the mind, and then the body will get fixed automatically. So while you undergo these medical procedures, please switch off the TV. Please use the time for absorption and reflection on the meaning of, of life. Why is this even happening to us? What am I supposed to learn from it? Um, do a lot of yoga, a lot of meditation, a lot of chanting of God's names. Uh, for example, I was sick sometime, not serious stuff, uh, just, you know, very severe cold, etc. I chanted a certain Vedic mantra, Gayatri mantra actually, which is chanted by Brahmanas in India. And I chanted it for something like 45 minutes or one hour with full pitch. My, my illness went away. The Vedic mantras have a lot of power to them when chanted with swara. So please try to chant Vedic mantras with the swara. And if you are unlucky like me who cannot chant it without the swara, uh, then at least chant Vedic mantras. Uh, I chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. These mantras have the power to heal our heart, our mind, body and the soul. Please use them. These are given to us by God for our well-being. Please use them. So we need to make our mind strong uh, before a surgery. The way you make a mind strong is by lot of yoga and lot of meditation, lot of chanting mandras and lot of pujas. Uh, read scriptures. Uh, we all overeat. Uh, I probably eat twice or thrice of what I'm what is needed for my living. Uh, try to cut down the amount of eating which you do. Uh, replace that with uh, reading scriptures. 
uh, reading Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam. Or if you're a, you know, if you're a Hindu, or if you're a Muslim, read Quran, read Bible, etc. Uh, read the great books of the world. Sit in the sun for an hour a day. Sun is your best friend. There is so much of healing one, one can get from sun. And keep your mind calm. Uh, actually, um, I, I try to wear uh, a tilak uh, whenever possible. It's for my own protection. You know, have some, uh, please try to wear some religious markings. Uh, they are for your own protection. Um, and as you become more and more spiritual, you will see that you are covered by some kind of protection, uh, some invisible protection always. Uh, once I was traveling in India uh, and uh, I boarded a train and I did a reservation and uh, the, the conductor, you know in India it is a very corrupt country, they take bribes for everything. He said, usually I take bribes for giving people a birth to sleep on, but with you I, I won't do it. And I was not even wearing a tilak or any, or any obvious religious markings. I don't know what told him that. So as we become more spiritual, we are protected by an invisible aura around us, uh, which protects us. And I told him, look, um, um, you know, here is a book for which will change your life. I gave him a Bhagavad Gita and he was very happy to receive that. Uh, even when I see my other doctor, uh, you know, I, let's say I see a dentist, she, you know, she treats me with so much love. She says, Sudhakar, this is the time for you. You know, I reserve this 9 to 11 for you, just for you. As we become more and more spiritual, uh, we will energize ourselves. We will energize people around us. And we will energize people around us to make the right decisions. And this is very important, especially in America.